At first glance, this 83 Toyota FJ60 Land Cruiser looks like a total unicorn. It ticks the boxes, low mileage, great cosmetic curb appeal, great color. But we're down to the last couple of days on this one and bidding is stalled out on this rig. I'll tell you why. Before we launch into today's example, if you're new to the channel, I'm Trey and this is Vintage 4 Wheel Auctions. We vet all the active truck and 4x4 category auctions on Bring a Trailer and highlight only the top tier of vehicles from this segment. So if you're in the market for a vintage SUV, you'll want to keep an eye on these auctions. With each video, our objective is to discuss and show you what to look for in a vintage SUV and what to avoid. Our hope is that this simple video format encourages interaction with viewers on vehicle condition and ending price points. So starting today, we have a 1983 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ60. I mentioned in the intro, this one has low mileage. It has 81,000 miles shown, which make it in the top 1% of FJ60s based on miles. This 1983 Land Cruiser has a four-speed manual transmission and two-speed transfer case. This one has unique brown paint with standard brown stripe cloth upholstery. I believe the paint code for this one is officially Copper Metallic 474. The bid is currently at 8150 and there are six comments on the auction. Stay tuned because we're going to get into more auction tips and pointers later in the video. We'll also have a more lengthy discussion about why this one is stalled. You don't want to miss this if you're a potential vintage four-wheel drive buyer on Bring a Trailer. Now, if you've spent any time on the channel, you know my passion for FJ60s. But if you haven't already watched my video about my personal FJ60, I've linked the video in the description. You'll want to see it. Like I said, I love the FJ60 Land Cruiser. When I saw this one on Bring a Trailer, it definitely piqued my interest. But what started with intrigue turned into an awesome textbook example of potential red flags to watch out for as a potential buyer on Bring a Trailer. Now let's get back to this auction that's live on Bring a Trailer. Let's look at the pros and cons of this 83 Toyota FJ60 Land Cruiser. First with the pros, this 83 Toyota FJ60 Land Cruiser has extremely low 81,000 miles shown. We have a list of recent work done on this Land Cruiser, including the fuel pump, brake master cylinder, and the engine oil were replaced in April 2023. Now we also have an accident-free Carfax report with this FJ60, which is important. We'll definitely make sure to review the Carfax in greater detail in the Carfax section of the video. But given this is an 83 Land Cruiser, due to the age, I wouldn't be surprised if there were gaps in entries and mileage discrepancies. Keep in mind, this is very normal for a vehicle of this age. As a matter of fact, I've seen numerous examples recently with gaps in entries, even with late model cars. The way I look at this, this is just all part of trying to understand the broader story on these vehicles, a piece in the puzzle, so to speak. Now there are a few cons here with this 1983 FJ60 Land Cruiser that we have to discuss. The first, and for me biggest con, is that this Land Cruiser does have significant corrosion on the underbody components. We'll show you further detail with the review of the pictures. The other cons, the auction noted that there's damage on the front bumper, rust in the tailgate, and other flaws around the vehicle that you can see in the pictures. Look, this is a 40 year old vehicle, so it's normal to have some defects. Like I said, the big one for me is the corrosion, but again, that's pretty normal. We'll just need to spend more time diagnosing the extent of the rust in the pictures review. Looking at the Carfax, we have the first entry in 1983, which shows it being shipped to the dealer. The next entry was in 1989, which is for a manufacturer recall. We see that starting in 1993, this FJ60 was located in Michigan, which could account for some of the rust and corrosion. Then we have gaps in entries from 1993 to 2002. Again, this is very normal for a vehicle of this age. Then as we go through the Carfax, we see this Land Cruiser has been in the state of Michigan until 2021 when it was sold. So while this doesn't give us the total picture of this vehicle it does provide a nice background and context on potentially why this one is in the condition it is and most importantly this gives the potential buyer more useful data points to make an informed decision before we get into the pictures we always review the comment section first by now i'm a broken record but this is a best practice that can save you time when you're looking through the pictures the Bring a Trailer audience has extensive knowledge on these marquee vehicles. It's very common for them to highlight areas of concern that you can then go zero in on with the pictures. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more when we do the picture review, but honestly, this is why I like Bring a Trailer as a platform. I also always recommend if you see something questionable with the pictures, ask a question in the comments section
reaction, you're probably not the first to see it, but that way you'll get an answer. So earlier in the video, I talked about that this is a textbook learning example. The first call out I see with this auction, number of comments. This auction only has six comments with two days left. I was just watching a very high interest auction on Bring a Trailer today that had 70 comments with two days to go. That's always a telltale sign that there's a very high interest in a vehicle. And if there's not, that's okay too, but it bears further investigation. And of course, there's a few reasons, but I think I have a pretty good idea why there's not more interest in this auction. We see here from this commenter and the answer to the questions, question mark, this is a bad sign. We saw this same commenter ask his question on September 10th. The seller did respond on September 10th, but it was very elusive. Yes, of course, I'll answer all your questions tomorrow. Three full days go by, and that's when the commenter asked the question again. Bring a Trailer prides itself on being an active community of active sellers. And in my opinion, this has cost the seller not only commenters, but also potential buyers. And I get it. If I'm buying a twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 car, you want answers. The first commenter says, wow, low miles. Looks like this one might have sat for a little while. Love to hear the story on it. Michigan salt on cars is such a bummer. I agree. This Michigan ownership likely does account for the rust and corrosion. Not much else here with the comments. I do think this exposes one of the flaws with the brand trailer. If you don't have an active seller, you're not going to get comments and you're not going to get bids. Let's jump into the pictures. This auction has 211 pictures. I've mentioned that best in class when you're looking at an auction on Bring a Trailer is 100 pictures minimum. So this one is doing very good in that regard. Look, what it comes down to, that level of detail gives you confidence you're getting a full representation of the vehicle. Like I said before, I think this can add to the overall value and confidence of the auction. Now, while the seller didn't do the greatest job at responding to commenters in the comment section, they did do a pretty good job with pictures. Like I said, 211 pictures pictures is nothing to scoff at. So taking a look at this first picture, this is what drew me to the auction in the first place. Like I said, at first glance, this thing looks awesome. I just love this copper metallic paint. It's very period specific. Jumping ahead, nice profile view. Honestly, it's like a five and 10 footer. This thing looks really good. Paint looks really clean. Those rims are exceptionally clean. Now we know this did have long-term ownership history. To me, it's clear someone did love this vehicle. It's just unfortunate that it lived in Michigan and was not treated for corrosion. To me, it's also clear that despite Despite the undercarriage corrosion, this thing wasn't driven very much. We can tell that by the mileage, but you can also see it here with the paint condition and also the lack of paint chips with the grill. I wish they had some paint meter readings. I think this is probably original paint. It still looks even really good on the hood. Like I said, you can see here rims in very good original condition. Then going back to the auction, it did list a dent in the front bumper. You can see that here in picture 20. I think you've got another minor ding here in picture 23. This is a typical area of wear. These taillight lenses look to be in very good condition. I always like this look, the classic Land Cruiser Heritage badging. Another minor ding here in picture 50. We do see some wear visible here on the roof. I'm really impressed with the condition of this grill and the Toyota lettering. Exceptionally clean, but again, this only has 81,000 miles on the odometer. Here you have another view of the roof just zoomed out. You can see some of that wear on the paint. I believe this is that same front end bumper cap. So this is the Toyota emblem right below the tailgate and the window. This is a view with the tailgate open. You can start to see some of the corrosion with the tailgate. Now, from what I've seen, the interior is in very good condition, which would be consistent with a vehicle with 81,000 miles. I do love the retro striped upholstery in the FJ60. Front seat's in very good condition. If this is original, this carpeting looks like new. Now, Seller did a good job with the 211 picture showcasing the full vehicle. Yes, there are some flaws like the corrosion we already talked about. But like I said, there are also some pluses like the low mileage. I think it really would have helped the seller's prospects to spend more time in the comments talking about the vehicle history. I think that really could showcase some of these pluses with this vehicle. Like I said, the seating all appears to be in great shape. You also see here that the dash appears to be in pristine condition. That's definitely a plus with an FJ60. They were prone to cracking if they're left in the elements. Nice view here of the seating surfaces, carpets, and that clean dash. Here we see the odometer reading. There was nothing in the Carfax that would make me think this is inconsistent. This one's still got the original center console. It's pretty cool. I don't see this much. This one also still has the original stereo. Really nice view of the dash here. This is in exceptional shape. Back seat upholstery looks like new. Another plus, the headliner appears to be in very good shape. Definitely spotting some corrosion in the engine bay here as well. Now picture 193, this is where we get to the pictures of the undercarriage. Another view to help potential buyers know what they're dealing with. Another close-up angle showing the corrosion with the undercarriage. 
And if you're a potential buyer, this is a very helpful photo just showing the full length of the vehicle. Another close up view, you can see the rust on those leaf springs. So like we talked about in the pros and cons, this one is a mixed bag. So it just comes down to a potential buyer's threshold for doing this type of restorative work. Now we know from my FJ60 video that pricing for this series Land Cruiser typically ranges from 20,000 to 40,000 on bring a trailer. Now that range is of course gonna be dependent on mileage, original condition, and level of restoration. Let's watch a brief clip from my video showing the high and low point for an FJ60 in the past year. That said, if you're looking for the apex of the market, these are two really great examples. This is an FJ60 finish in an attractive blue that sold for $37,750 in February. Here's another great condition blue one with 233,000 miles that sold for $29,500. The record high for an FJ60 in the past year on Bring a Trailer was this exceptionally clean 85 FJ60 with only 78,000 miles. It sold for a whopping $72,000. And the low for a stock FJ60 in the past year was this beige metallic with 215,000 miles that sold for 19,000 in January. It did have some corrosion on the undercarriage, but I agree with the commenter here. This is a really great deal. I Let's give this one credit for the low miles and clean Carfax that will deduct for the corrosion that needs to be addressed. So based on a review of the pricing and where the auction sits today, plus some of the other areas of concern that we talked about in the comments review, I'd say it's highly likely this one will hover around the low water mark for bring a trailer in January of 2023. So what do you think about this 1983 Toyota FJ60 Land Cruiser? We'd love to hear your feedback on pricing and condition in the comments. Also, I've said it before, we are a new channel. If you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe. This goes a long way to inspire the creation of future content. Thanks again for watching. See you next time for more vintage four-wheel drives.